Hi there, in this video I'm going to take you through an introduction to Mobile Report Publisher. There's a couple prerequisites that you have to have in place to get these reports up and running, and there's also some background work that you're going to want to do. So I'm going to take you through some of the tasks to get this set up uh, to begin with. So the first thing is that uh, you have to have Report Builder and SQL Server Mobile Report Publisher downloaded and installed. I'm going to show you how to download it. We're not going to go through the install, but I'll show you where you need to go to find it. Then we're going to create a data source. From that data source, we'll create a data set, and then we'll go in and create a sample report in Mobile Report Publisher. This is a very high-level introduction to the Report Publisher, so we won't be going into details about any of the background information for building the reports. Because of that, there's some assumptions that I'm going to make when viewing this video. One is that you already have SQL Server reporting services up and running, that you know how to access that site and log in. The second is that you have a sample database to use where you can pull data, either AdventureWorks or some other database. And you know a little bit about SQL. We're not going to write SQL code here. I already have the SQL code written. So I'm basically just going to copy and paste it from, uh, from a sample that I have. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, dive into the, uh, the report publisher here and the uh, report server. So I've got Power BI report server. It's built on the same infrastructure that SSRS is built on. So the, the background and the setup isn't going to be any different, even if it looks a little bit different from what you have. I've also created three folders, one to store my data sources, another one for my data sets, and a third for reports uh, once we've got our report built. So let's start off with uh, connecting to an actual data source, in essence, building something that connects to a database. So what we're going to do is go to the new menu here and choose data source. We have to give our data source a name. I'm going to call it AdventureWorks. Uh, since that's the database I'm going to connect to, uh, and it's a data warehouse version of that, and it's the 2016 version. I'm going to skip the description. Uh, we are going to connect to Microsoft SQL Server. There are a number of other options there, but that's what we're going to connect to. I can never remember the connection string, so I'm going to click Learn More and scroll down here and get the list of different connection strings. In this case, I have an instanced version of SQL running, so we'll take this entry here. We'll copy it and paste it back into our connection string. Uh, so what I mean by instance is I have a web uh, IP address for my server like this and then um, put a slash in here because the instance that I'm going to connect to is called SQL 2016. If you don't have an instance don't put the slash just put the IP address. Uh, if you have an instance then you'll have to do slash and then whatever your instance name is. The initial catalog is the name of the database you're connecting to. In my case it's AdventureWorks DW2016. All right, scroll down a bit. Uh, I'm going to populate it with some credentials. So we'll say use the following credentials. It's a database connection, not a Windows user. Uh, so, and it's a read only set of credentials. So we'll enter those here. And they have limited rights and access. And then we'll test the connection. Once I've got tested, uh, connected successfully, we'll click create and there is my data source. Now, next step is I got to create the data set. To do that, we're going to use the report builder. So click the down arrow on downloads and click report builder to download and install the report builder. So download it and install it. I've already got it downloaded and installed. So I'll just go to my start menu and pull up the report builder. The first time you connect to the report builder, it's going to ask you which server you want to connect to. Uh, in that case, you can either get it from your IT folks, or usually it's the server name slash report server, not just reports, but report server. Uh, if you launch the report builder from here, so once you've got it downloaded and you say new uh, report, just a paginated report, it will usually connect automatically. All right. 
You won't have this list populated the first time you run it, so we're going to select Browse Other Data Sources. And when you do that, it will try and find a list of sites that you can use. The one that you connected to will be listed here. In this case, it's the first one on the list. So I'll click Open. When I open it up, I should see the three folders that I've created. And in the Data Source folder, there's the new data source. So use that. So I have to have a data source in there before I can create a data set. In essence, I have to have a database before I can have a view of that data. So once it's listed, I'll just click Create from that data set. It's going to prompt me to log in again. And this time I'm going to save the password with my connection. OK, I could create a data set graphically using this interface here. But I've already created a query that has the data set I want. So I'm going to copy that query out of SQL Server Management Studio, change the view to edit as text, and then paste the query into this text box. Now I've limited the year of data to 2013 and I put a little note in here that says if this was production we'd want to make this per a parameter. This is an intro video. I'll do parameterized mobile reports in another video. So we'll just leave that the way it is and then run it to make sure I'm pulling data. Uh, this is a data warehouse. So I have fact and dimension tables. I'm connecting the product dimension to the fact internet sales and a date dimension to get the date out of there uh, with an English month and a calendar year. All right, so that looks good. We'll go ahead and save this and we'll save it to the data sets folder. And we're going to give it a name of sample um, internet sales. And actually, maybe I'll call this um, Internet Sales 2013 in there, so I know that's where it's coming from for now. All right, so that's saved. Uh, and then we're going to go back to the File menu, and we're going to create another data set. So this data set just gave us all the Internet Sales for 2013. In my mobile report, I want to have a drop-down where I can select the products that were sold in 2013 and filter a chart to only view those products. So to do that, we'll create a new data set. The data source you just used should already be listed, so we'll create off that data source. And just like the previous query, I already have a query built. So I'm going to copy that query out of uh, SQL Server Management Studio, and we'll go ahead and paste it into uh, paste it into the text box here. So a quick rundown of what it does gives me the product name uh, the product key, which I'm going to use to link the, the key from the fact table to the dimension table. And then um, I'm just summing the quantity sold uh, and then grouping by the product key and the name and ordering it by the name. So when I get this list inside Mobile Report Builder, it will be alphabetically sorted. And I'm only getting the products that were sold in 2013. That's what this uh, where clause does here. Again, production environment, this would be parameterized. We wouldn't hard code in the date. All right, so it looks good. I'm going to save this data set also in the data sets folder, but I'm going to change the name to lookup products. Okay, we'll save it, and then we can go ahead and exit report builder. We're done at that point. Inside the Power BI report server, I'm going to check the data sets folder, make sure both data sets are there. They look good. Now I can go and I can run Microsoft SQL Server Mobile Report Builder. So run that app. Uh, we're going to start a new app. I'm going to discard the changes that I had from my old one. First thing you're going to do when you come in here is go to the server connections and you're going to add a new server connection. There won't be one the first time you run it. I'm going to edit the one that I already have pointing at my instance of, of SSRS. Uh, the web address you'll put in here, this sometimes confuses people because in Report Builder, it's the Report Server web address. But in Mobile Report Builder, it's just the web address to the web portal itself. And so you should just be able to take the first part of this web address, the server name, and slash reports, if that's the default name and just paste it in here. If use secure connection is checked, I had to uncheck it to get it to connect, and I'm using my current Windows account to log in. If that's not what you're going to use, then uncheck it and put in a different account. 
Uh, once you connect, you're just going to be returned to the screen. If it doesn't work, you'll get an error message that says it doesn't work. So you don't get a message saying, okay, it worked. Go to uh, the data tab and add a data set. So we're going to add the lookup data set first. And report server is our data so is where our data source is. Um, I, you may only have one listed here. I have two. And um, we're going to choose the lookup products first. And you'll see that we have the products listed here. They're in alphabetical order with the product key. So we'll go back to layout. And we're going to choose a uh, selection list. Drop the selection list there. Expand the selection list. And then once we've expanded um, or had the selection list on there, we're going to go back to the data tab with the selection list selected. The mobile report builder will always create a simulated table when you drop a report element on. So we need to go in and change the data source to our lookup products. The key will be the product key, but the label is going to be the English product name. All right. Uh, and then we'll leave it like that just so we can go back and look at it. So we'll go to the layout and we'll see that it has all listed there. If I preview this particular item, hit the drop down, I can see that I have the items listed in alphabetical order here. And I can select any of them. It's not going to do anything, but I can select it. All right, go back to data again. Now we need to add in all of the sales data. So we'll add data from our report server. And we'll do Internet Sales 2013. This table is a little bit bigger, so it's going to take a moment for it to load into our data set. Once we've got it loaded, we need to make a connection between the selection box and the, and the chart. So go back to Layout. We're going to add a category chart just under our selection. We'll grab the right bottom right corner, expand it. Go back to Data. Make sure your category chart is chosen. The report element that you select in this left pane determines the context of what we're editing down on the bottom, not the data set you select. That doesn't impact anything down here. It's what report element you have selected. So choosing the category uh, chart, again, there's a simulated table there because it creates it by default. We're going to change it to the internet sales. That's this data set here. And uh, the series that we're going to select is going to be the English month name. We want to display the data by month. And we want it to summarize, not the product key, the sales amount. So we choose the sales amount, go to options, make sure sum is selected, and we're done. OK, I'm going to pause there and show you what it looks like now. It's not quite done, but you can see a little bit of what it looks like. It's coming along. So I have my products, I can select them, but nothing changes in my chart. Notice that Mobile Report Builder is aware that my English month name should be sorted by month, not in alphabetical order. It's kind of a nice feature that does that for us. So um, I'm close, but I'm not making the connection between my selection and my chart. So to do that, we're going back to the selection list. And we need to go over to the right here and say filter these data sets when a selection is made. So when I choose a product key from Lookup Products, I need to filter my internet sales data set based on product key also. Product key from both data sets needs to have the same data type, exactly the same. So even if one was text and the other was number, but they both contain number, this wouldn't work. Mobile Report Builder doesn't like that. So make sure they're exactly the same data type. Even numeric data types, if they're double and one's fixed integer, um, that won't work either. They've got to be exactly the same uh, data type. So these two are good, but we're not done. We have to make one other change. We go back to Category Chart, and we need to go to the options for the series and say that this particular chart is filtered by selection one and then click done. Now we can go back and preview these data, these charts. Uh, for all, it looks good. If I choose a bike uh, washer, if I choose a classic medium-sized vest, you'll see that the amounts change. So just one more note, the thing that I see people forget the most is to go back into the category chart click the options button on the series and make sure that that list is filtered. So you have to do it both in the selection list and in the chart to get it to filter. 
All right, at that point then, you can go off and uh, save your mobile report. You have a choice of saving it to the file system or saving it back to the server. If you decide to save it to the server, uh, you give it a name. So we'll just call this sample internet sales. And uh, I'm not going to publish in data set. We'll browse. We'll go up one directory and click sample reports, choose that folder, and save it there. Once it's saved, I can go back to Mobile Report Publisher, refresh my page, go home, go to Sample Reports, and you can see Sample Internet Sales. Mobile Report Publisher knows, or SSRS knows it's a mobile report, so it will display it in its own category, and then we can run it. Now, what, I have, what I'm not going to cover in this video, but I might do in a different one is, if you have the phone app, uh, you can go ahead and link the server connection and IP address on your phone app, the Power BI phone app, to this instance of SSRS and get that mobile report on your phone. It's very sweet. Uh, I'll do a separate video and show you on how that works. But that's it for now. I think we, we got a lot covered in, in a short period of time. Give me some comments. Let me know what you think about this particular setup and if there's anything else about mobile report publisher you want me to uh, cover. Have a good one.